among the Protestants. And the mega churches aren't really uh, geared towards biblical Christianity. They claim they are, but they, the Holy Spirit is not the author of confusion. And so the idea that this mega church over here, this, this charismatic preacher is preaching one gospel and the one over here is preaching another gospel and they're both claiming that they're being inspired by the Holy Spirit. And as I said, the Holy Spirit is not the author of confusion. We Orthodox don't have to do that. We don't have to reinvent the wheel, so to speak, because we have this tradition that has been handed down by the early church fathers. It's intact. Even the way we worship is intact. The way we worship today is the way the early church worshiped. If someone came, one of the apostles came walking in here and saw what we are having here today, he would recognize what was happening here. If he went into a mega church, he would have no idea. It would be like a Roman um, arena, probably, to him. He would think, this is ridiculous. And these people are calling themselves followers of Christ? I don't think so. So what do we do when we look at what we have in the Orthodox Church? Number one, we want to make sure that we personally keep the faith. And what does that mean? I read another article recently by someone who said that really Christianity, this is not a former Christian nation, it's still a Christian nation, they said. But it's, a, it's the same brand of Christianity that the United States had from the days of the pilgrims. Basically, it's it's a watered-down version of biblical Christianity that's getting more watered down as the years go by. It's no wonder people are walking away from their churches. They're walking away, but they're pretending like they're still Christians, many of them. Oh, well, I believe in Jesus. Well, what do you believe about Jesus? What do you believe about the Eucharist? Uh, there, this poll that was done recently, oh, probably about a year ago, I read a poll that said that 60% of Roman Catholics in the United States no longer believe in the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. And since then, I read another poll. 70% now, 70% of Roman Catholics no longer believe in the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. And yet that was one of their uh, key doctrines for, from the beginning, but now they've lost it. And why? Why is that, do we think? Well, I suspect it's because when you take away the mystery and beauty of their Mass, and you're basically like the Presbyterians, kind of a dumbed-down, super dumbed-down version of Christianity, why would people even bother to believe what they used to believe? Why would they believe that anymore? They don't. Presbyterians don't. Presbyterians have always seen the, the Eucharist, the, the communion service, as as a memorial for something that happened in the past. But we Orthodox see it as, as us, at this moment, entering into the heavenly banquet that's going on in paradise that we're waiting to go to. We don't have to wait until then to participate in the heavenly banquet. We're doing it today, here. And yet we look around us, and, you know, I, I would, I would give as an example the shootings that we've been hearing around the country in schools, even in grade schools recently. All those precious children, 19 grade school children that were killed by a gunman, and tr I think three of their teachers. I mean, it, 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 why is this happening? Why? Well, it's because our religion has changed. In this country and what it has changed into is it's all about me it's about me I am my own God and what gives me pleasure is what uh, is of this temporal world and I'm gonna have it I'm gonna have in my grasp what makes me happy and the idea of this life being a preparation for eternity 
is gone. Nobody believes that anymore. People are more likely to believe in, in uh, little green men from outer space than they are about the afterlife. That's the way this country has become. When we enter into the divine services, we, we enter into a mystical union with the God who created us and who has invited us into communion with him. Why would we care about whether we're popular among our neighborhood people or, 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 or if we're children? Why do we care if we're popular at school? when maybe half or more of those kids aren't going to be in the heavenly banquet in the future, the eternal banquet, because they don't believe in God. And then in an age when we see this great remake of, of the world and all that, moving towards a one world government, and people are thinking, oh, you know, like that one statement was put out about... Uh, you will have, you will own nothing, but you will be happy. Oh, wonderful. I'm going to own nothing, and I'm going to be happy. And why am I going to be happy? Because I've been ordered to be happy. Because I have been having this pressed on me that I should be afraid. And I'm only going to be happy when I know that the world government that's being created is going to make me happy because they're going to give me everything that I ever thought I needed. Never mind the people that are orchestrating this, our billionaires and getting wealthier on the backs of regular people. They're not going to be living happy with nothing. They own everything. So what do we do about our sustaining our faith? What we do in sustaining our faith is look at this gift that we have. This is not just simply some memorial service about something that happened in the past. And it certainly has nothing to do with our ethnic purity. It's not an ethnic club. Orthodoxy is not about being Greek or Russian or Serbian or Bulgarian. It's about being a member of the nation of Orthodoxy. It's about being a member of Christ's church. It's about taking seriously the gift that God gives us. What more could we ask for? than to participate in the actual body and blood of Christ during the Eucharistic celebration that brings down God's heavenly <clears throat> grace upon us and sustains us like medicine. We are in the hospital for the soul. We should be rejoicing. We should want to be here more than anywhere else. Because this is the only place we are going to find eternity. Here. Now. It's not about, oh, we got stuff to do. I still remember that first time that, as an atheist, that I walked into an Orthodox church and beheld the heavenly banquet for the very first time. And I knew in my heart of hearts, even though I knew very little about orthodoxy at the time, I knew that this was Christianity that had been hidden from me growing up Lutheran. It had been hidden from me because the churches that I went to as a kid believed that Christianity had been missing from the second century to the 14th, 15th century, until the Protestant reformers came along and discovered it for the first time. Ridiculous. Do we really believe that? Do we believe the scripture passage that tells us that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church? Except for during that period of time between the 2nd century and, say, the 1500s or the 1400s. Oh, then it was missing. Yes. Really. So, there is good reason for us to rejoice. 
There is good reason for us to embrace what we have and make it our central goal every day of the week, not just Sunday, but every day of the week to embrace orthodoxy every time we make the sign of the cross over our food, every time we stand before our icons in our homes, and at that moment that we start our services and bow our neck to the icons, we have, we have opened up the domestic church. It's not about Sunday. It's about every day. It's about making the faith fundamentally at the core of every breath we take. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us.